Hi friends and welcome to another fun video. Today we will be looking at the absolute basic of creating a parametric Revit family. An introduction to family creation where I explain every step. I found a really nice concrete construction on the big web. This beautiful prefabricated culvert from Nobi. I will reconstruct it in the Revit family environment. So the simple definition for families in Revit is that it is a group of components used to build a model. For example, walls, windows, stairs, doors, bathroom, fixtures and showers. The parametric part refers to creating objects or models that are defined and influenced by a set of parameters. These parameters can take various forms such as numerical values, rules, formulas or relationships between different parameters. These factors collectively control the design of the object, allowing for flexibility and adaptability. For instance, in Revit, you can create a parametric window family. This window can be controlled by a set of parameters that can be modified. Let's say one of the parameters is the window height. When you adjust the window height parameter, the window heights inside the project will automatically adjust accordingly, assuming the family has been set up correctly. In our case, the parameters will be wall thickness, roof thickness, floor thickness, height, width, length, chamfer size, and material. So just before we start, many are tempted to use the model in place function because it is easier in the moment. And sometimes that might be okay, but I do suggest using the family option. Since Revit, the program, performs much better with a family rather than a model in place. Another benefit is that once you have created a useful family, it can be saved as an independent file and reused in any future project. Over time, you will build a library of valuable families for yourself and your company. Let's finally get started by opening a new family file. Autodesk do provides several options and sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming. So if you know what you, you are going to create, like a window, you go for the window template or you know you're going to create a structural column, you go for the structural column. But if you are unsure, starting with the generic model is a safe bet. If you're unsure and you choose a different template, it might restrict your design options. It's always possible to change the category later if needed. So I will go for the generic model. Since this is concrete, we do want the element to be able to host rebars when loaded into the main project. So we check the box can host rebar. It's quite tempting to immediately dive into the geometry creation process, but this hasty approach may not be the most efficient workflow I can lead to complications later, particularly for complex families. So let's quickly establish a structured work workflow, kind of a guideline for creating families. I prefer to break it down into four phases. So we have phase one, the skeleton. In this phase, we establish the skeleton where the reference planes serve as the foundational framework for our geometry. These reference planes act as constraints anchoring the geometry in place. Phase 2, the muscles, the next step involves adding annotations such as dimensions, diameters and arc length to the reference planes. These annotations carry the load, dynamically adjusting the reference planes as dimension values change. We go over to phase 3, brain. This phase introduces the control center housing all the parameters and formulas that empower us to manipulate the dimensions. Here we create potentially very complicated parameters with formulas and constraints guiding the muscles in their tasks. This is where the heavy lifting happens. Well, unless you want a stupid family, you create a good brain. We go over to phase 4, the last phase, the skin. This is the visible part, the actual geometry. So after constructing the skeleton, empowering the muscles and fine tuning the brain, we finalize the family by adding the visibly, visibly elements for the end user. So it's normal to jump a little between phases, but this framework provides an overall guideline on how to approach family creation. By following this workflow, we can build families that are not only structural sound, but also highly adaptable and user friendly, leveraging the control and flexibility offered by parametric design. My goal when creating a family is for it to be so well constructed that there's no need to open the family 
when it's loaded into the main project. So now I've explained the family building workflow. Let's put theory into practice by finally getting started with the family creation of our culvert presented earlier. We'll start with phase one by setting up our reference planes in the front view, where we later create the cross section for our culvert geometry. So this will be our height, then thickness for the roof and floor, and of course, the little chamfer detail. We're setting up the width, the wall thickness, and again, the little detail chamfer. It's always a good idea to draw or think through what kind of a reference plane you need, just like I did at the start for our culvert. It's not important to get the length, height, and width correct right away. That is something we will adjust later with our parameters. We move over to phase two, attach the correct annotation to the reference planes. And I start with the total width. Well, since this is a multi-segmented dimension, we can check the EQ making all the dimensions in the segment equal, and it will expand an equal distance from the center line of the culvert. We do the same for the height. Then annotate roof thickness, wall thickness, and we do all that without having the geometry laid out. And we're just moving some of the annotations, cleans things up a bit. We then annotate the floor thickness and then do the chamfer thickness. Adjust the scale to increase the visibility of numbers in our dimension lines. We move over to phase 3, the brain. Creating the parameters, we go to the family types dialog box and start creating parameters for our culvert. And starting things off with the width parameter. I do set parameters as type parameter since when placing out the culvert it will contain of more than one element and it will be the same size as each other rather than unique elements. I have made an entire video explaining the difference between type versus instance parameters. Additionally, I place the parameters within the dimensions category. It's crucial to maintain a well-organized parameter system. For example, parameters in this category are intended for the end user modification, while parameters with, for example, formulas that function in the background of the family, I place in the category other. Another thing to consider is the name of the parameter. For a complex family, vid might not be the best suitable name. Perhaps cool with would, would be more appropriate. I also like to have no spacing between words if the parameter is placed in the other category. Now that we have established the parameters, the final step in the phase three involves linking these parameters to the dimension lines created in phase two. So we just click uh, an annotation and associate the correct parameters to these dimension lines, making, it, making the family one step closer to being a parametric family. Also worth mentioning it is possible to move the parameters up and down the list. And I would like to place the parameters that will most likely be used the most by the end user at the top of the group. It seems like we forgot to create a parameter for our length. We just do that very quickly. And we associate it to our length dimension. We go back to the front view and connect chamfer dimensions to the chamfer parameter and that will be the last connection we will do so let's do some flexing before phase four this means we would like to change the value for our parameters to check if the reference planes behave as we intended flexing allows you to avoid reaching the end of creating a complex family only to discover that it doesn't work properly by testing and checking, 
each step along the journey you can identify and address any issues early. Taking it step by step ensures a smoother and less frustrating experience during the family creation process. And as it turns out, the flexing did find one error. We forgot to annotate one of the chamfer sides. We quickly added dimensions lines and connected to the chamfer parameters, proving that flexing is an important step of creating a family. We move on to the last phase, phase 4, the skin, setting up our geometry. It will be an extrusion and we create it in the front view. We draw up one and one line. Of course we could use the rectangle, but let's keep this tutorial slow and steady. Personally, I prefer to position these elements adjacent to the reference planes rather than directly on top of them. This approach offers, I think, a better control when aligning the geometry to the reference planes later on. We have now aligned the outer rectangle and we continue to align the inner lines to our reference planes to create the thickness. So the parameters order the dimension lines to increase or shrink. The reference planes will follow and the geometry that is attached to the reference planes will move accordingly. And important, very important, we always constrain our geometry to the reference planes and not geometry to geometry. It will help maintain stability, reliability and the integrity of the family, no errors. When aligning, make sure to press the little lock. Next, we ensure that the endpoints of the lines are in alignment with a reference plane. And we complete the process by drawing up the lines that will form the chamfer for our culvert. Press OK and move on to the floor plan view and align and constrain the length of geometry to reference planes. Something we do want the end user to be able to change is the material for our culvert. And we accomplish that by selecting the geometry and locate material in the project browser. Press the tiny associate button on the right and connect it to the parameter material we created earlier. But we also want the material to come with a prefix suggestions, so we add material. We open up the material browser, delete the existing ones and find a new one. We select the concrete C4555, add it to the family material library and hit apply. We go back to the family types dialog box and start flexing every parameter to make sure the culvert is working. Before saving it and loading it into the main project, make sure to purge the model. Basically, delete everything you don't use and make the file smaller and more manageable. Load it into our main project. The Curved family can be found in the project browser under families in the generic category. We do some more flexing in the main project. A little side note, keep it simple, like just keep it simple as possible, don't make the family do so many things that it makes the user experience horrible. Keep it simple and strip it down, not too complex with hundreds of parameters, not too big of a file size. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Simplify it for the end user. This concludes this introduction video for the family creation. Be sure to like and subscribe.